the issue we want to look at today, or the question is, do you know that you have eternal life? So let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about how you can know for certain that you have eternal life. First of all, let's look at 1 John 5.13. After that, we'll look at two other verses here. But let's start with 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. And here it says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So, again, I want to encourage everyone to read the whole letter of 1 John. Make sure you read this whole chapter and get this verse in the right context. Read the New Testament, read the Old Testament, make sure it's in the context. And that's always true of every verse we look at. But to right here, let's look at this verse right here. It says, These things have I written unto you. So, I'm going to say, I have written these things have I written unto you. Now, who is the I? In this case, we're going to assume the I is First John. It's John. I mean, he's the author of this little letter right here. So John has written this letter here, First John, to the person reading it, and it's defined here as, uh, in verse 13, written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So John has written this letter to you who believe on the Son of God. Alright, now first of all, if we take the Bible and we go back and look at the book of John, uh, it tells us some things that happen to the one who believes on the name of the Son of God. For example, John 3.16 says, Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So for the one who believes, if we look at John 3.16, the scripture says he has everlasting life. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. So if you read the book of John, you're going to find it very clearly laid out that to the one who believes, he has eternal or everlasting life, okay? Now if we go back here to 1 John chapter 5, 13, it says, these things, have, these things have I written unto you who believe. So these people, we have to assume, have eternal life. But look at the reason he wrote to them. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. And it says that ye may know that you have eternal life. So according to this, John wrote the letter of First John so that the believers who were reading First John would be able to know, know, know that they had eternal life. And this brings up an issue here. Can we be one who believes on the name of the Son of God and have eternal life and not know it. And I suggest to you that that is true and there can be someone here that I'm talking to who is a believer in Christ but does not know that for certain. There are doubts, there are fears that Satan is messing with you, giving you uncertainties. And I want to submit to you that if you'll take this verse, 1 John 5, 13, meditate on it. Memorize it. Put it in your heart and ask God to teach you the true intent of this verse. I think you'll find that God says that this letter right here was written to those who believe on them as Son of God so that they would know they have eternal life. So knowing that you have eternal life is not based on how good you're doing presently today. Knowing that you have eternal life is not based on the day that you remember you did something or asked God something. Knowing you have eternal life should be based upon that which is written. Because the Bible says, I have written these things to you who believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. Knowing based upon what he wrote to them. And please don't take my word for it, but go back to this verse. Go back to God. Ask him to give you the true meaning here. But to 
And let's go look at another verse in Luke chapter 1, which to me makes it clear that I'm not taking 1 John 5.13 and make it appear to say something. I think it says the same thing right here in Luke. So let's read Luke chapter 1. And really, 1 through 4 is one big long sentence. So I'm going to go ahead and read the whole thing, although we're going to zero in on 3 and 4. But Luke chapter 1. Luke says, For as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they deliver them unto us, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So, it seems to me that Luke's saying, being that there are other people who have set in hand to make a de declaration like Mark, uh, to write out an account of what had happened, he said, and, and I had perfect understanding of the very thing, those same things, so I thought it would be good to write also an orderly account. But look at the verse 3 and 4 a little closer. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things in the very first, to write unto thee, most excellent Theophilus. So it said, it seemed good to me, in this case, me would be Luke, it seemed good to me also to write and we're going to say he had this represents here a little written document, a letter, to write in order, most excellent Theophilus. So instead of you, we're going to call him Theo here. Seemed good to me to write to you, Theo, and then it says, for the reason is in verse 4, that thou mightest know. And then it adds another word that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Know the certainty. So here it says, it seemed good to me to write a letter to thee, Theo, so you would know with certainty these things, but these things are referred to in verse 1. You've already most surely believed them. And in verse 4, these things were in that has been instructed. But he didn't want to leave them there. He wanted him to have an orderly account, a written account, so he could know with certainty. Which again tells me that knowing for certain is based upon that which is written. Because he, Luke, knew Theo already believed these things. He put this written thing in existence so he would know with certainty. To me, that's saying the very same thing, very similar principle as in 1 John 5, 13. And then again, I want to refer you to Proverbs 22, where it appears to me that we have a very similar idea. And here, we have the author saying, uh, I, it's going to help me right here, have written in verse 20, I'm sorry, Proverbs 22, 20 and 21. Verse 20, have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge? Have not I written unto thee? And then it says in verse 21, that I might make thee know. certainty of the words of truth it says that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth so why did the, he write these things I have written unto thee that thou mayest know with certainty the words of truth so knowing again is based upon what is written and then it gives an added benefit here in verse 21. And 
that thou mightest answer the words of truth to those who send unto thee. So if someone gives you, or someone comes to you and asks you, why do you believe that? You can just point to the words that you know for certain. And they too can have the words of the certainty of truth. So on these three passages right here, I submit to, the, to you who are watching to go back and read, meditate on your own, ask God for wisdom, and pray that God would give you the ability to know what you do know, starting with eternal life, with certainty, based upon His Word. His Word never changes. doesn't matter how old you are. does not matter how good you're doing today. It never changes. The Word of Truth never changes. So your certainty, your knowing, based upon that Word of Truth, will make you a very solid and sound believer. Now, the first verse says that you may know, based upon what's written, that you have eternal life. But this second one said, know with certainty those things wherein you've been instructed and believed, which goes beyond just the topic of eternal life. Do you know that Jesus is the Lord God Almighty? You need to know it by what's written, not just know the idea. Do you know that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Everything you say you know, you need to know it by what is written.